Seema Kulkarni coordinates the gender and rural livelihoods activities for the Society for Promoting Participative Ecosystem Management. She has written about water, equity, gender, and rural livelihoods and teaches courses in the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai, and Savitri Bai Phule University in Pune. She facilitates the Mahila Kisan Adhikar Manch or Forum for Women Farmers' Rights and a number of women's organizations in Maharashtra. AID supports the work that the society is doing through a network of women farmers' rights movements in various rural districts of Maharashtra. Simaji will talk to us today about how the COVID-19 crisis affects women, particularly rural, tribal, and farm women. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So thank you, Arvinda, and uh, thanks to Bilal, Ashish, Kamani, and uh, Harshji also for their extremely uh, insightful uh, presentation. Uh, maybe uh, I probably should not be repeating some of the concerns that have already been expressed by the three presenters. Uh, of course, what I would like to uh, certainly highlight are a couple of things, I think, which is uh, fairly evident from uh, all the three uh, presentations. Uh, which is to say that uh, this has, of course, been uh, an unprecedented crisis, of course, of the migrant workers, uh, which has also affected a number of other people. And I would particularly focus uh, on the rural and the impact more specifically on women farmers. But before I begin, I would uh, like to uh, say uh, that this particular crisis, and uh, I mean, this uh, one is not only referring to the COVID-19 crisis, but what has also happened uh, as, you know, as an outcome of that, and which is uh, manifested in the lockdown that uh, the government of India announced on 25th of March. So I think in a way, uh, the crisis uh, clearly points to a complete failure of public policies. And uh, the public policy failure is evident in terms of the public health facilities, because I think uh, lack of health infrastructure at the decentralized level, whether it is in rural areas, public hospitals in towns and urban cities, uh, it, it, they clearly stand uh, exposed today. The second failure is uh, of the public food distribution system which I think uh, has uh, actually come across very strongly from all the presentations and the various reports that we've been reading with reference to uh, the migrant workers. And I think we sitting here in Pune and Mumbai, particularly on helplines and on a day-to-day -day basis, are listening to uh, you know, really harrowing tales of all these migrant workers, particularly from Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, uh, West Bengal, who are here in uh, very, very large numbers. Uh, let me not really again talk about them because uh, they're extremely, uh, you know, uh, heart-rending kind of uh, tales that we are hearing every day, where migrants have uh, almost, you know, the stories that they narrate to us that they have turned into beggars rather than uh, workers uh, with any dignity. So it clearly uh, exposes uh, the failure of both the health system and the public distribution system. But also thirdly, what I would like to highlight is the failure of uh, uh, the entire economic system as well. Because we are seeing swathes of workers from the rural areas coming into uh, cities, coming into urban towns, more developed so-called states uh, from you know, the rural hinterlands. Uh, simply because of the deep rural livelihoods crisis. And uh, if we look at the agrarian crisis, which manifests itself in terms of the increasing farm suicides, we clearly see that, you know, that there has been a complete lack of uh, an understanding as well as a redressal of the questions uh, in the rural context, which also then leads to large-scale migrations uh, in the urban areas, which also means that uh, uh, there is an undue burden on uh, the women in the rural areas. So what I would be basically focusing uh, on is also what we at Mahila Kisan Adhikar Manch are trying to do uh, with uh, the women farmers and uh, uh, I mean the whole notion of women farmers. I mean uh, there is no recognition, women are not seen as farmers simply because they do not own land. So we are talking of a section of population uh, which has no recognition in their own right as workers or as farmers. 
And this is still the population that engages. More than 65% of women are engaged in agriculture. Uh, despite uh, their presence in agriculture, we see that uh, they are not entitled to a large number of resources, including ownership to land. Uh, increasingly, we are also seeing a, a large number of data sets are also showing that uh, women are forced to sort of uh, manage fallow lands because men are out migrating. So under adverse conditions, women are seen doing uh, agriculture with no access to water or credit or any other resources, uh, which has also meant basically that uh, the burden of women, burden on women of unpaid work uh, is increasing tremendously because much of our data shows that uh, there is a very, very sharp decline in uh, rural women's employment. So while there is presence in agriculture, paid employment is... Uh, declining very, very sharply uh, in the Indian context. I won't get into uh, much of the data, but very clearly we see uh, that from 2004-5 to 2017-18 data clearly shows that there is a sharp decline. So we are looking at uh, these sections of the population and what kind of impacts uh, the crisis of the lockdown has had uh, on uh, this section, particularly focusing <clears throat> much more on the single women and uh, uh, women who come from farm suicide affected households. Uh, uh, we are also actually working with uh, cane cutters. So these are uh, interstate migrants, uh, basically from uh, the more uh, drought prone regions uh, migrating into uh, areas where sugarcane cultivation is happening. So, so the plight of the uh, sugarcane cutters is also extremely um, uh, disheartening. We, we are already seeing that, uh, uh, in fact, the entire sugar production uh, came under the essential pro uh, commodities production, and therefore the migrant workers could not go back home. So you see that at the interstate level also, there were a different set of problems that were uh, coming forth. Uh, but particularly looking at the women among the cane cutters, I think their plight uh, was particularly vulnerable because these are uh, conditions under which uh, uh, men and women work. Basically, they are housed in uh, on the fields with uh, absolutely abysmal conditions of housing, uh, lack of water, etc. Uh, so, in this, I mean, given this uh, backdrop, uh, you know, we are looking at the. I mean, theoretically, all of us are vulnerable uh, to the coronavirus. But uh, in practice, all of us fare uh, very differently. And I think the entire story of the migrants is, um, is an example of this. So what uh, you know, we would like to say is that, I mean, often comorbidities are seen in terms of your pre-existing health conditions. But in the context of India, because of a completely unplanned lockdown, we are seeing that uh, the impacts have been uh, very, very differential and the poor uh, and more specifically, single women uh, have been affected uh, very, very uh, badly. So we are looking at, for example, uh, a lack of food, starvation uh, for uh, a majority of the women who are, you know, 45% of all of the women in India are underweight, more than 53% are anemic. And uh, with a crisis such as the present one where food distribution is uh, extremely inequitable, uh, one can really see the kind of uh, impacts, uh, impacts on sex workers who are often without documentation uh, have also been uh, extremely severe. And uh, there has been uh, very little in terms of redressal for uh, all of these categories who come uh, without any documentation, without any ration cards. We've heard stories, just one story of today where um, a woman uh, from UP actually died standing in a queue uh, just waiting for her ration. Uh, I think, I mean, there are numerous stories that we could uh, narrate in terms of, uh, you know, the variable uh, impacts uh, that we are seeing across the board. Um, what we are also witnessing, I mean, uh, speaking, coming uh, to particularly rural women uh, who've been, who we've been talking to over the last uh, two or three weeks, uh, trying to understand what are the, you know, the day-to-day -day, uh, problems that uh, they are facing. Uh, apart from, of course, food and uh, lack of access to food, one of the important things that uh, women have been talking to us, and uh, many of them are also uh, petty vendors, have been selling their vegetables in the weekly markets. But with a complete shutdown of weekly markets, uh, these women, uh, largely who are single women, 
uh, are also impacted uh, economically because they simply do not have uh, neither the economic or physical spaces to actually uh, sell whatever little produce they have. Uh, violence is another major issue. I think uh, across the globe, uh, instances of domestic violence have uh, been on the rise. Uh, UN Women has already spoken of uh, uh, this increasing domestic violence as a shadow pandemic. And uh, every day on the helplines, we are getting uh, numerous calls of women who are facing uh, domestic violence. And so I think uh, uh, clearly there is a differential impact uh, on women, but also more specifically on women from uh, social groups like the denotified or the nomadic tribes, Dalit and Adivasi women, and also single and uh, widowed women. Uh, given this sort of context uh, where we are seeing these differential impacts and the severity uh, being much more on single women, uh, trying to sort of look at you know, the policy response that came from the government, uh, we clearly see that uh, it was completely inadequate. I won't go into all the policy, um, you know, the measures that were announced by the Modi government, uh, which were really woefully uh, inadequate. We had a PDS announcement, which was only catering to 67% of uh, uh, our, uh, you know, people who have any kind of documentation. So we are not looking at a majority of the population. In fact, uh, studies by Jean Drez and all have pointed out that uh, nothing has been, no uh, ration card uh, figures have been updated since the 2011 census. So we are probably excluding uh, more than 100 million uh, people. In Maharashtra, that uh, means about uh, six and a half million people. So we are already excluding a large number of people uh, just because uh, updation of data has not taken place. Uh, forget about those who never made it uh, as a result of various uh, other reasons. Uh, we also had a package which spoke uh, specifically for women, which was about uh, uh, Jandhan accounts. These are the, in fact, in rural areas, uh, they're also referred to as Modi accounts. Uh, how interesting it is to see how, you know, uh, uh, the kind of narrative that gets built. Uh, but many of these accounts are inactive and uh, those that are active and have managed to uh, see deposits in their accounts have still not been able to access the banks simply because banks are completely uh, overwhelmed, understaffed at this point in time and uh, because of the curfew and lockdown, uh, people are not able to reach. So clearly women who were promised uh, Jandhan, who were promised widow pensions, uh, who were promised uh, free uh, gas uh, seem to be still uh, in the waiting. So there, there really doesn't seem to be a very significant relief uh, on that uh, front either. Uh, now we are also looking at uh, the whole employment guarantee program. I mean, so in a way, uh, our uh, government is the greatest employer and they could very well have done, uh, you know, to ensure that uh, employment allowances are given, unemployment allowances are given to at least the job card holders. So we have still a large number that, in fact, the women that we have been working with, uh, we have abysmal uh, record of, you know, not more than 20% who have a job card. So you can already see that exclusions are uh, very high among single and uh, 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 women affected uh, from farm suicides. So you already are seeing a large number of uh, these exclusions in the relief measures that were announced uh, by our government. Uh, so what we are seeing in the rural areas, I mean, there are uh, numerous examples. I, of course, agree uh, that, you know, uh, there, is a, there is much more of a community feeling in the rural areas. So there are networks. Uh, Ashish already spoke about that. So the conditions of the migrants, uh, and especially women migrants who are trapped, who are stuck, uh, is definitely worse than what you see among the rural communities. But even within the rural areas, uh, what we are seeing is that the entire economy right now uh, is uh, based on borrowals. So uh, either, uh, you know, it's a, it's a borrowal from a grocer shop, it's a borrowal from uh, some relative. So what happens to this economy of borrowals after the lockdown is something that is uh, going to be a matter of concern. And I think this is going to be a greater concern also for migrants who are uh, right now, you know, depending on entirely uh, the goodwill of the landlords who have said, okay, two months, no rent, etc. 
but what happens uh, after the lockdown opens you know there would be a lot of accumulated uh, uh, you know uh, amounts that people would have to uh, bear so i think these are larger questions and uh, we have some excellent examples where local gram panchayats have taken the initiative so uh, where um, uh, women were not able to reach banks gram panchayats have themselves managed to uh, loan out money or give money to uh, these women so there have been good examples as well but what we see is the complete failure of the government and uh, i think this is something that uh, really uh, needs to be taken on board that uh, and this is you know a crisis such as this has presented or has exposed our public systems so in the long term in the medium term one of the most important things that we need to be uh, getting to is strengthening of our uh, public systems and that also means a very very strong uh, alternative to our rural distress our agrarian distress and i'm hoping kiran uh, would uh, speak uh, on that so i would not uh, speak about that but uh, let me just say as makam let me conclude with a few uh, broad demands that uh, we are uh, putting forward to both our state governments as well as uh, at the center uh, one is of course the question of food because right now it is a priority so at least in the short, short term for say between 3 and 6 months we need to universalize B pds that is the public distribution system we have the midday meal scheme we have the icds scheme the integrated child development scheme uh, which have been extremely helpful in terms of nutrition providing nutrition and food for uh, a large number of the rural poor and i think this uh, has to be uh, our uh, prior uh, demand and it has to be a priority for the government we have huge stocks so i don't think uh, there is any argument that the uh, government can uh, advance in fact from all the reports there is more than 77 million tons as of 20th march uh, with our uh, in our go downs and this is going to be in increasing with the rabi procurement which is now soon to begin so i think uh, clearly the government can universalize pds and if it does that it will go a very very long way in terms of addressing the question of hunger uh, there have been huge economic losses and i think there has to be a strategy a relief measure which is strong enough and not as inadequate as what was announced on 26th march uh, where uh, cash transfers will have to be done and uh, significant cash transfers uh, we are not looking at the 500 and 1000 uh, that were announced there have already been excellent proposals uh, recently Uh, Amartya Sen, Raghuram Rajan, and Abhijit uh, Sen, all of them uh, also jointly put forward a proposal. But there have been proposals from various movements uh, saying clearly that we need cash incomes. We have enough data from NREGA. We have enough data from our Ujwala gas scheme where we can actually record uh, as to whose accounts uh, the cash uh, needs to be transferred. Uh, amounts ranging anything between five to six thousand over a period of three months has been proposed, and I think this uh, should uh, be taken seriously. And uh, cash transfers of this kind uh, need to be uh, done with immediate effect. We have the PM Kisan Sanman scheme, which uh, is really very, very inadequate in terms of both its reach as well as the amount uh, that it's talking about. and importantly uh, i mean farmers are now going to need their credit so we need not just a 2000 rupee advance but much more in terms of uh, you know providing credit and providing other agriculture inputs as well uh, on the domestic violence front although there are some helplines i think uh, the issue of domestic violence uh, needs to be taken really very seriously and we need to have not just helplines but, but in a decentralized manner what would be uh, the possibilities of trying to uh, address whether it is through the self help groups or the anganwadi workers of course they are hugely overburdened but nonetheless uh, what are the decentralized mechanisms that would help uh, address uh, domestic violence as well so i think uh, so these are some of the key measures that really need to come in place very soon and we cannot rely only on the compassion that our prime minister is constantly you know reminding us of but we need uh, it to be strongly supplemented by budgets and finances uh, i would end there with uh, thanking all of you at aid because uh, as a result of your support we have been able to reach uh, uh, a large number of single and widowed women 
who did not have ration cards. So they were, were completely outside of the public distribution system. And uh, that has really uh, also helped us engage with the state uh, in a very meaningful way. So thank you very much and happy to uh, respond to any questions. Thank you very much, Seema. And uh, we are also very uh, glad that we were able to be part of your work, both in delivering the rations and also in supporting the demand uh, for universal PDS. And we'll be sharing uh, with everybody in this call a letter that aid has endorsed for universal PDS, at least on an emergency basis um, for six months during uh, this crisis, but also part of the larger campaign for universal PDS. So with that, I will um, move to